Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Michael Fortin. I am the Director of Promotion for the Maine Tax Portal here at Maine Revenue Services. I am joined by our panelist, Lori Brand, Deputy Director of the Sales, Fuel, and Special Tax Division. And it's my pleasure to be your MC for our Special Fuel Refund Account webinar for the new Maine Tax Portal, which will become available on October 15th, 2024, which marks our fourth and final rollout of the main tax portal. The portal is now open for individuals and most main businesses to file and pay taxes, view notices, and much more. You can visit the MTP information page to learn more about the portal, and I can give you that address. It's main.gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal. And I'll give that to you one more time and later this morning as well. It's main.gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal. And you can visit that site and learn more about the portal. And we will demonstrate that uh, page a little bit later this morning. Uh, just some housekeeping things before Lori gets started with her presentation. Uh, first, the raise hand button at the bottom of the Zoom screen will not be used for today's presentation, although you'll have many opportunities to ask questions. Today's webinar is designed to be interactive. So once Lori begins her presentation, I'll be enabling all of our attendees with the ability to unmute your microphones and ask questions as Lori pauses for questions at the end of each segment. Those attendees who don't have a mic or are simply more comfortable typing out your question can use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if we're unable to address your questions live, we'll answer as many questions as we can, but we, if we can't, we will follow up via email following the webinar. There may be times when you'd like Lori to repeat a step that you've missed, or perhaps you're simply unable to watch today's entire session. Uh, then it'd be helpful to know that today's webinar is recorded and can be viewed by anyone who's registered. We'll be sending out a link in your email tomorrow where you can go to the Zoom website and watch the recording. And there are no documents or presentation materials that you'll need for today's webinar. Feel free to take notes, but know you can always rewatch the recorded material anytime you'd like to review it. And uh, finally, we just uh, like to remind everyone that, of course, we can have unexpected technical challenges with the, these live webinars. So if we should experience any technical difficulties, we will attempt to resolve those as quickly as possible and ask for your patience. Um, that concludes all of our housekeeping items. But one last point is along with Lori today, behind the scenes, we have Bill and Tyler helping us with a demonstration of the main tax portal. So we'd like to thank them for their assistance. Lori, I think we're ready to get started. All right, thank you, Mike. Welcome everyone. Today, Bill and I will be demonstrating main tax portal functionality, including how to create a username and password and how to submit fuel tax refunds. None of the data that we're using for this demonstration is actual taxpayer data. It is all created in our development environment. And since we're using the development environment, you may, may see blue populate links besides some fields such as banking information, which will not be available to you in the production environment. Before we get started, please take note that preferred browsers are Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. Internet Explorer is not recommended or supported. We're entering the final rollout of the main tax portal and anyone with a tax type from the previous rollouts can use the system at this time. If you have questions during our presentation, we will be interactive so you can ask questions either using the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask if you're able. We do have a few things to cover today, so let's get started. To begin, there are several ways that you can access the main tax portal. For this demonstration, we're going to begin at main.gov forward slash revenue, which is the main revenue services homepage and is showing on the screen now. You can either select the red file and pay button, which will take you to our electronic services page, but we're just going to jump down to the green button that says main tax portal and select that. And we are now on the homepage of the main tax portal. Submitting a fuel tax refund application is, for the most part, a non-logged in activity, which means that you do not have to have a username or password for the main tax portal. We're going to start with a non-logged in activity and 
um, we're going to navigate to the business panel and select the refund applications. And then we're going to go to gas and fuel refunds, which is the first panel. And then we'll select fuel tax application uh, that we'd like to submit. And we're going to select off highway to start. So the first screen that you're going to see is the um, taxpayer information screen. You'll need to select from either um, a valid EIN or SSN. You must choose one or the other. So we're going to select the EIN and then that will prompt the screen to open up um, it, where you will enter your ID type and then your ID. And then your legal name. Okay, contact person. And all red, all the fields that you see with a red asterisk are required fields. So you'll, you'll be required to make entries in all of these fields. And we're going to enter a contact phone number and email address. And then we can select next. And now we're on the commercial activity screen. So this, again, note the red asterisk. These are all required fields. So you'll need to answer the questions um, it, that indicate which commercial activities or ac activity or activities that you are engaged in. So we're going to select commercial fishing. There we go, or commercial, uh, yes, commercial fishing, there we go. And then if you have an, a commercial exemption, this is where you would enter that. And then we can select next. Okay, on the mailing address screen, you'll enter the address that belongs to your business as applicable. And once you've entered all of the fields indicated by a red asterisk, you'll need to select the blue link at the bottom. This is mailing address needs to be verified. So select that. And once you've done so, you can select next. And here's a breakdown of all of the gallons. This is the equivalent of the bottom of page one on the paper return. So this is where you would enter the number of gallons that you used in your commercial activity. And again, this is gas or clear diesel, not dyed diesel, because there's no excise on that. So now, um, if you have different types, you can enter gallons used for other. Um, but here, we've completed the entry that we need to make for our application, so we can select next. And this is where you will enter the period begin and end for your purchases. You can't go back further than 18 months for off-highway. If you do try to go back further, meaning 18 months is your earliest purchase date, if you go back further than that, you will receive an error, which is being demonstrated. So you can only go back 18 months for off-highway purchases. And then we'll enter our end date. Again, required fields. And this is the equivalent of page two, the top of the paper return or paper application. All right, so now we will enter the total paid for the fuel that excise tax has been paid on. And then the number of gallons that we used. And the calculation is all done for you. Now, I'd like to draw your attention down to where the sales tax would be on this application. Um, because we indicated that we were, were a commercial, we're engaged in a commercial activity such as commercial fishing, um, the system removed the sales tax that you would pay because during a commercial activity, you would also get your sales tax back, which is the same process that we go through now. You on, If you have 
of a commercial um, exemption, you should be putting that on your off-highway application near the top of the of that app and entering in the type of exemption that you have. And then we do the manual calculation for you if you do not do that. So this is what the system has calculated based on the number um, that what we have made for entries, the total paid for gasoline and diesel used off-road, and then um, the number of gallons. So we're going to select next now to proceed. And here's a summary of your refund claim. None of these fields are editable as they're based on your purchases and gallons that you entered on your previous screen. So everything looks good here. We can select next. And now this is something new. So you will be required to attach your invoices to support your refund claim. And to do that, you would use the blue attachment link, which opens up a pop-up window. And here is where you would select your file from invoices or credit memos, proof of payment. It can be any or all of those things. So once you've selected your file, and select OK. You can see that your document has been added into the attachment tables below. So that's all of the documentation that we're going to add for this refund request. So then we can select Next. By submitting your application electronically, if your refund is less than $20,000, you can choose to receive your refund via direct deposit. If it's more than 20,000, it automatically will default to a paper check and you won't be able to have this option. So we're going to select, did we like our refund via direct deposit? So let's select yes. And we'll answer no, that is not going to an account outside of the US. If you indicate yes, then you will not be able to get your refund electronically. We'll enter our routing number. which automatically enters in your bank account name and then your bank account number. And that should be associated with either a savings or checking, depending on which one you are going to use. All right, we've entered that information and we can select next. For those of you who haven't used the portal, this is the equivalent of signing your return. You should read and check the declaration as it is required. In the states that you are submitting this application and it is accurate and true to the best of your knowledge and ability. So then you'll name, enter the name of the individual submitting the return. You'll do that twice for verification. And then submit. And here, because this is a non-logged in activity, you'll enter your email address twice for confirmation. And okay. And here is your confirmation. We do recommend that you keep this for your records. Um, the confirmation code is something that you will need should you need to do research to find out um, if you submitted this application. Again, because this is a non logged in activity. You can also select the printable view and use your browser's print functionality to print this return or not return this confirmation. I apologize. Okay, so we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first being, is there an other category under commercial activities like the paper form? Yes, um, we did. That is the last field at the bottom of the application, and it is still remains on the electronic um, version of that as well. Um, and will you be able to check the status online? Unfortunately, no, you will not be able to check the status of your refund. You will only be able to verify if you have um, if your application has been submitted or not. So maybe that will be a feature coming in the future, but as of this moment or um, when we go live, it will not be available. Okay, I don't see any additional questions. So Bill, let's select okay. All right, and that takes us back to the same refund applications panel. And from here, we will select um, our political subdivision application.
Okay, again, because it's a non-logged in activity, you'll be able to enter, you'll, or you'll be required, I apologize, to enter all of the fields indicated with, with the red asterisk. And you may have noticed that the federal ID number is what this application defaulted to. And that's because for a political sub-application, you cannot use a social security number. It has to be a federal ID because you're a government entity. All right, so the department name. If you have questions about your department name, you can click on the blue circled I, and that will give you a hint of what we're looking for. But for a lot of um, political subdivisions, you will use or may use the same EIN number. So the town may have one EIN number, which is used by the fire department, the school, any number of things. And this will help us determine where your application should be mailed to and who, what name should be on the check or direct deposit, if you will. So that's what we're looking for as far as the department name. Um, we'll next enter our contact person. Phone number and then email address. And we'll select next. This is the same as you saw previously. So we're going to enter our address information. And now we verified our address so we can select some uh, next. And here are your fuel purchase dates. So for political subdivision application, you can only go back 12 months for your fuel purchases. So if you try to select a date that is earlier than 12 months, you will receive the error message being demonstrated. Your earliest purchase date has to be within the 12 months. Okay, select our end date. And this information is going to carry through to the next screen. So here we're going to select next. And here's our gallons, or our breakdown of gallons purchased. So this is the equivalent of page two on the current paper application, where you will now enter your, um, your month and your year of your purchases and your gallons of gasoline, your gallons of diesel and propane, if those are applicable to you. So we'll enter everything that we want to, um, that we have purchased gallons for, and then we can select next. And here you are presented with a claim information. This is based on everything that you entered previously. If you need to adjust anything, such as your dates, your number of gallons, you'll need to select the previous button at the bottom of the screen to do that. Okay. Um, while we're talking about previous screens, I'd like to note, it, uh, note at the top of the screen, there's a blue bar that does indicate your progress as you move through the application. You can also use that blue bar to move backwards. Say you did want to change your fuel purchase dates. You could click on that blue link and it would take you back to that date. And you can make an update if you needed to. You can also select cancel at the lower left, which will cancel that your activity and it will not save your progress. You can select to save a draft and that does save your progress through this application and you can come back to it at a later time if you'd like to. This all looks good. All of our gallons are correct. The, the rates are all accurate, which are published on the form. And then we're going to select next. For this application, you are not required to attach any supporting documentation. However, main revenues, well, let me rewind that. You're not reported to on a regular, required on a regular basis to, but main revenue services may reach out to you and ask that you provide that. If we note that your gallons, um, the price you paid for your gallons is too low or too high. So you are required to attach an affidavit for assignment of refund each time that you submit an application if you are in that position, meaning if you're a political subdivision who has authorized a third party to submit your applications for you or submit applications on your behalf, then that business would be required to submit 
an affidavit for assignment of refund and a copy of the contract. Contracts are only good for a year. So you would be required if you're in that position of being a third party, again, you would be required to, to attach each time you submit an application, a copy of the assignment of refund and a copy of your contract. If you need to download a copy of that affidavit, you can click the blue link that is right there on the screen and that will take you to, um, to a, a version of that form and you can download it. I see we have a question, so I'm gonna pause for a second. Which refund applications should schools use? You should use this one. Schools should use the political subdivision application. All right, since we've added, um, since we have added an attachment in the previous application, we've already demonstrated that functionality. So for this one, we're just going to select next. And here you will see that direct deposit information. Um, we're, we are not going to select direct deposit this time. And so we can just select next. We're going to opt for a paper check. And here's your declaration. Again, you should read it, indicating that this application is true and accurate. Enter the name of the individual submitting the application twice. And then submit. We'll enter our email address twice for verification. and we'll say okay. And here's your confirmation. Again, you can use the printable view and use your browser's print functionality um, that will print out a copy of this submission for you. Right now we're going to say okay. And we are going to submit a refund request for a retail dealer's gasoline shrinkage or RDGS as some of you may know it as. So this refund type can be submitted either as a logged in or a non-logged in activity. And the reason for that is because there are other text types that are, or filing requirements that are associated with retail dealer gas shrinkage. So um, what we're going to do at this time is we're going to create um, a username and password so that we can show you how to submit that retail dealer gas shrinkage refund as a logged in activity. So let's select home. And that will take us back to the main text portal homepage. There are two ways that you can create a username for the main tax portal. You can select create a username at the top, right under the home screen login, or you can go to quick links, select register and apply, and then select create a username. You only need to create a username if you do not already have one. If you already have one for the main tax portal and already have, um, I already have been filing or paying, you don't need to do this. But if you're brand new to the portal, this is when you would need to do this, this activity. So under your creator username panel, you'll see five different options. So you must select one of them. The only ones that are applicable to us in this particular activity is the business or organization, which means that you, um, that you typically represent a business or organization and would be submitting your applications under an EIN. The second option would be that you're an individual and that you would be operating as a sole proprietor um, using your social security number. We're going to select option one that we're a business or organization and we're going to select next. And this is where you would see the information required to continue in the process of creating your username. So we're going to select next now. And here is the validate tax information. Again, red fields are indicated, oh, required fields are indicated with red asterisks. So because we, um, we need to validate our tax information, you're given three different options here, a federal ID, employer taxpayer identification number or social, social security number. Because we represent a business or organization, we're going to select federal ID and then we're gonna enter that ID.
and then we'll enter the account type that we are creating this username for, which would be the retail dealer gasoline shrinkage. And then we'll select next. Now that verification of the account type could be any of the tax types listed at this point in the game, um, because all of our tax types will be in the portal uh, after October 14th. This was important at the beginning um, and in previous rollouts because the tax type was verified, uh, used to verify your registration. If your tax type that you were selecting didn't wasn't uh, available to you or wasn't in the portal yet, you wouldn't have been able to continue with your registration. So now that every, all of the tax types are in the portal, you can select whichever tax type that you like from that list. The verification type gives you two different options here for us. Uh, the letter ID and the date of the letter that you receive from Maine Revenue Services and the total refund amount issued from the most filing period. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, select the letter ID that you receive from Maine Revenue Services and then we're going to select next. And we're going to bring up an example of that letter. The information that you'll need for this process is in the upper right hand corner, the letter ID and the letter date. Those two pieces of information must come from the same letter. Okay, so then we can go back and enter that information. Okay, and then we can select next. Okay, on the user information screen, you will enter a username that is created by you. There are no character length requirements. And then you'll enter your first and last name, your email address, and confirm that. You'll be asked if you would like to go paperless for your mail delivery. And if you select yes, just keep in mind that some types of mail are required to be sent via US Postal Service. The security panel requires that you um, enter a password. Password requirements are being shown to you on the screen right now. You can click on that blue password link in, in the blue circled eye and that will show you. So a minimum of 12 characters. You must have one upper and lowercase letter one number and a special character. So now we'll enter that password. Passwords are visible um, until they match if you select the blue eye at the end, which is being demonstrated. Once you've entered two matching passwords, it the screen will default to asterisks and you won't be able to see them anymore. So now we can select and answer a secret question of our choice from the list. And the phone number panel will default to a cell phone, but you can choose from the list whichever type of phone that you'd like to use. And we'll enter our phone number and select next. And here's a summary of your information from this uh, activity of creating a username. We can select submit and enter your email address. And now we'll say, okay. And there's your submission confirmation. You can either jot down that code that is showing on the screen, or again, you can use the printable view button and use your browser's print functionality. At this time, we're going to say, okay. And this takes us back here, but we're going to go and um, submit that retail dealer gas shrinkage application as a logged in activity. So I'm not seeing any questions right now. So we're going to proceed by entering our username and password. And now you'll be presented with the creation of a two-step verification. The creation of this authentication process is only required one time, but you will be required to authenticate each time that you log into the portal. So right now we are going to choose email as our authentic 
authentication method. So we'll add our email address. And once we've done that, we will select save. And now we're going to select the blue populate link button that we mentioned earlier would not be available to you in the production environment, but this is where you would enter the security code that you received during uh, via your selected authentication method. Um, so now we've entered that and we can select confirm. And you get taken back to this verification page the first time because it gives you the option to either set up a secondary authentication method, say that your email wasn't working for whatever reason, things happen with electronic devices. So you would have the uh, ability to either set up an authentication app or to receive a text message. Text messaging right now is not available in the portal. It will be coming back to us soon, uh, but right now you have the options um, in the live portal of either an authentication app or email. We've already selected our method. We're going to say confirm. And now you are inside the main tax portal. So we've landed on the summary tab and we can see all of the tax types that are registered to us under the EIN number that we created our username under. So this is everything, okay? Um, we are next going to go to the Action Center tab where we can see any actions that are required that we, we must might want to handle, um, such as viewing our letters. We have two that are on red and we have a sales tax return that needs to be filed. So we're going to bypass that right now. We're going to go to Settings. And this is where you can choose your mail delivery, you can, um, update your mail notification methods, um, you can also, you know, shows your access, your security, what you have access to do, which is file returns and make payments. We're next going to move to the more tab, which is the final tab. And this is where you can search your submissions. You can view any letters that have been sent to you by main revenue services. You can update your names and addresses. You can view your access in the access management screen. There are all different kinds of activities that you can do on this tab. We are going to navigate to the letters tab and we're going to view any letters that have been sent to us by main revenue services. And look at that, we have a couple. So we have a commercial exemption card and an invitation to the main tax portal. Um, if you click on a blue link of the type of letter, that will open up that letter and you can use your browser's print functionality to print that out if you choose to do that. So we're going to file that application now. So let's navigate back to the summary tab. And let's move down to the retail dealer gasoline shrinkage panel. And this panel does allow you to make a payment, view and file returns, or submit your retail dealer gasoline shrinkage refund application. So we're going to select that now. And these are your instructions. We have made some changes now that this is available in the portal. Some of you that file or submit RDGS applications use multiple suppliers. And moving forward, you are going to be required to submit one application per supplier because we are going to require that you attach a statement from your supplier that shows the number of gallons um, and the price that you paid for those gallons during your refund period. So we can get into that additionally a little bit later. So we're going to select next. And because this is a logged in activity, the system has populated our federal employer ID number and our legal name. We are still able to add a business trade name by clicking on the blue circled eye that again indicates what we're looking for here. and then your contact person, phone number and email address, all indicated with red asterisk. And we're going to select next. Your address is pre-populated and already verified. 
So we can select next again. And now you have your claim information. The period begin and period end defaults to the current period that you are in. As an example, statute is very strict on what periods can be filed and when they can be filed. So for the July through December period, your return or application would be due no later than March 31st of the following year. For a period of January to June, your application would be due no later than September 30th. So again, it automatically defaults. You can't change it. If you've missed a filing, then you've missed the filing. You can't go backwards. So here is where you would enter the gallons of gasoline that you're claiming your refund for. And you can enter as one or as many as are applicable to you. And based on the rate, that automatically does a calculation for you and calculates your refund, which is indicated at the bottom of the screen. So assuming that everything looks okay, you'll select next. And here's the documentation tab. We've shown that on a couple of other applications, but this is required. So it's indicated by the red asterisk, uh, red exclamation point that you will see at the top and bottom. So again, this is where you would use that add attachment link and attach a copy of your supplier statement. The supplier statement should have on it the, the following information, the supplier name, address, the business name, your business name, and address, as well as the dates fuel were purchased. And again, if you have more than one supplier, you must enter a separate refund claim for each supplier that you have used during this refund claim period. So we've selected our file, we can choose okay. And again, that document is attached below. So at this time we can select next. And our refund is less than 20,000. We do want that via direct deposit. So we're going to say yes and no, it's not going outside. Enter our routing number. The account number and confirm that account number. And we'll choose from savings or checking. And we'll select next. All right, let's check the de declaration and enter the name of the person submitting the return or application. And let's select submit. And there's your confirmation number. Because this was a logged in activity, you can search your submissions and you'll be able to see a copy of this there within your submissions. You can also select printable view to print out a copy of this if you choose to do that. All right, that was our final activity. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions that are pending. Uh, so that will conclude our demonstration. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. So we would like to invite our audience to ask any questions that, that you may have on this material, please use the Q&A area at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We'll give you uh, another couple mo moments just to make sure that you don't have any additional questions in mind. And while we're waiting for those, let's take a look at the main tax portal information page, which contains um, quite a bit of information that would be helpful. And right now we're at the Maine Revenue Services website. The address is maine.gov forward slash revenue. And uh, we're gonna scroll the page down and we'll look under the important updates heading. You'll see a, a link, the second one from the top there says important information about the Maine tax portal. We're gonna click that. And that will bring us right to the Maine tax portal information page. And if you would like to bypass the main revenue homepage, you can type your address in to your browser as um, main.gov forward slash revenues forward slash portal, and it will bring you right here.
So let's take a look and see what we have. We're going to scroll the page down just a little bit. And you can see there's general information about the portal, including a, a welcome video. And if you've not had a chance to view that, it is a nice overview of the system itself. And um, below that, we see four rectangles, four rollout boxes. So those are the, the different rollouts or different phases of the main tax portal that we've implemented each year. And as we're approaching our fourth and final rollout in October, um, we hover over the box and we can see all of the tax types that are being brought into that rollout. So if you're interested in looking at those in more detail, you can and visit and do that. And then right beneath that, we have some uh, blue buttons there. The main tax portal login button gives you a a quick and convenient way to jump over to the portal itself and begin um, doing, you know, non-logged in or logged in activities using the main tax portal. Um, it brings you right to the system. Uh, the next button are FAQs. We'll click that and just take a quick look at it. The FAQs are made up of questions that have been asked by attendees of prior webinars. So like yourselves, sitting in the audience today. If you had a question, we take those and summarize those and put those in a, a format that's easy to find. You, If you have a question that uh, comes to mind, there's a good chance that it's already in this list. And hopefully that'll be helpful as you begin to learn more about the portal. So a great resource for you. And we'll go ahead and click back. And uh, the next button in line are in instructional videos. We're going to click that, take a look. Instructional videos are short narrated um, videos. They're demonstrations on how to use different functions and features of the main tax portal. And uh, those are available, of course, like all the materials here on our website, any time of day. So uh, you can... Um, use those as a reference. And, and if you want to learn um, how to perform certain um, activities on the portal, there's a good chance there's a video there to explain that. And go, go, go ahead and click back. And then uh, the last couple buttons there um, are uh, um, for payroll service providers. We also have information for tax professionals. So if if you do have a tax professional that you work with, or if tax professional might be in the audience, there is information specifically for them, which helps give them materials on how to introduce their clients to the main tax portal. And at the bottom of the page, you'll see the olive green colored section. So that um, helps you access webinars or schedule um, to attend one of our upcoming webinars. We do have a number of topics this fall, that are related to the final rollout of the main tax portal. So if you find a, a, a topic that you'd like to attend, or if you'd like to repeat something that you've, you've already attended, uh, you can click there and register for a webinar at your convenience. And there's also the recording of past webinars. So if you missed any of the prior rollouts, for example, the other tax types like, um, like sales tax, for example, um, you can watch those recordings in their entirety. And at the end of the fall webinar series, um, these videos, the recording from today's video, um, for example, may be one of the ones posted there. So you can see that. Those of you attending today will receive a link to this recording tomorrow so that you'll have that available to you right away. You don't need to wait until that gets posted to the website. You can watch it right away. Uh, regarding our contact information, it is listed there um, on the page. Um, just a note about uh, if you're looking for assistance with the portal itself, such as you know how to create a username or um, anything of that nature, the Taxpayer Contact Center is the best um, place to contact. The email address and phone number are listed there. The telephone number is 207-624-9784. I'll read that to you again, 207-624. 9784. And the email address is taxpayerassist at maine.gov. Once again, taxpayerassist at maine.gov. If you have 
specific questions for the sales tax division, in particular, the material that you've dis, you know, discussed today, if there's questions um, related to that, then it would be best to contact the, the uh, sales tax division directly. Um, their contact number is 207-624-9693. Again, that's 207-624-9693. That is the, um, the number for sales tax. And for email, you can email them at fuel.tax at main.gov. That's fuel.tax at main, M-A-I-N-E dot gov. Okay, I think that's all I have. Um, I don't see any additional questions, so I think we're about ready to wrap up today's session. Before we do, um, I would like to thank our presenters. Uh, so Lori, great job, and to Bill and Tyler in the background for helping. We appreciate it. And thank you all to our attendees for taking time out of your morning to join us and learn all about the main tax portal. As a reminder, we have recorded today's session and you will receive an email in your box tomorrow uh, where you can go to the Zoom website and view the recording. Uh, if anybody did submit a question today, hopefully we've got answered all of them, but anything remaining that we've not addressed, we will follow up via email. Um, and if you have additional questions, I'll give you the contact information one more time. We do want to recap, of course, those important points is that the main tax portal is now open for individuals and for most main businesses to file and pay taxes, view notices, and much more. And specifically for special fuel refunds, that will go live on October 15th, 2024. And you can visit our main tax portal information page to learn more about the system. Again, that address one more time is main.gov forward slash revenue forward slash portal. And if anyone has a question about the main tax portal itself, such as questions on like usernames and how to get in, uh, that telephone number is for the taxpayer contact center, 207-624-9784. And their email is taxpayerassist at main.gov. And again, for sales tax specific questions, fuel tax, that is uh, for the sales tax division directly. You may contact 207-624-9693 and their email is fuel.tax at main.gov. So thank you all for attending today. Uh, very nice to see all of you and uh, we wish you a great rest of your day.